Hey everyone, this is Tea Time with Celeste, and of course, I'm your host, Civil Celeste, and we have a very special show lined up for you today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about women empowerment, of course, my favorite subject, and we're going to be talking a little bit about civic engagement and politics later on. And right now, I have a very special guest with us. Her name is Shakina B., and she has a beautiful organization, nonprofit, called Women Coalition Empowerment. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Of course. You look beautiful. As do you. I said the color is the color. <laughs> I usually wear mostly black, so no, I threw in a little color just trying to. She's looking fancy. <laughs> thank you. So um, I just want to say thank you so much for coming by, um, stopping by our, um, our show today. Okay. Um, so I guess we can just get right into the interview. Let's get into it. Because I have lots to say. Sisters of Tune. Now, Sisters of Tune is a program of the Women's Coalition. Okay. And this is our introductory pilot year, so we're going to call it the branding year of Sisters of Tune. Okay. It's a focal collective. So could you give us a little um, a little bit of like what inspired you to create a program like that, and um, how did it come about? Okay, so the Women's Coalition for Empowerment began around 2010, 2011, mm -hmm. and we decided to collect information so that women could have access to information to become self-sufficient, right. to be able to support themselves and to alleviate some of the financial burdens wow. of just having limited access limited income and a lot of times being by themselves we oh, compile yeah. that information and we put it on our website as a resource section and then from there we started developing programs and as of the end toward the end of 2016 into 2017 we've created a program which is in our introductory year called Sisters Attune. Mm -hmm. It's our arts and culture program specifically for female vocalists of color in wow. the jazz community. And what made you want to create something like that? You know, because this is powerful, right? You're doing something great for the community. You're empowering women of color, of course, you know, to, to, to live out their dreams, of course. Oh, yeah. So did it just happen one day? It was like, oh, you know, it clicked. No. And I was just like, oh, let, let me just do this. You know, Not how did that all. happen? Um, it actually started with just my experience interacting with artists. I oh. myself being a vocalist. Really? I am. She's. <laughs> <laughs> she shouldn't have said that. Oh, <laughs> she should have just kept it to herself. I should have. Um, I myself being a vocalist and also being around a lot of female vocalists, mm -hmm. musicians, a lot of the people I encounter have, you know, financial issues and not able to sustain themselves financially. Right. And, you know, having limited access to consistent, sustainable employment within the arts and not really knowing how to acquire um, employment within the arts world, not officially knowing how to brand themselves. So right. that's something that we're going to work on with this small group of women. And then when we take this to the next level, we're going to embrace more vocalists and artists that are in need of that same support. So correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. So you basically fund the vocalists, correct? We pay the vocalists for shows, correct. Wow. Yes, and that's something that's not like, oh, you're coming out and doing this for exposure. No, you actually are compensated mm -hmm. for your work because we're setting the precedent that artists should not work for free. Right. And do you guys help them brand too? Yes, you we're actually we're okay. working with the individuals who are currently in Sisters of Tune, the Vocal Collective. Okay. We're helping them to create their YouTube channels, that's wonderful. update their bios, and um, to use their social media marketing specifically to brand themselves as individual performers. Wow. And we work together as a collective, raising money for the charity, yeah. which is the Women's Coalition, right? And to, to continue to develop more initiatives like performing shows mm -hmm. and we have a show coming up. <laughs> I know. I will definitely get into that. Yeah, I just wanted to um, you know, just to be more specific cuz okay. you know, it's like, oh, you have an organization yes. you helped fund and also brand vocalists and Correct. artists. Yep. Um so guys, um shout out to all my musical artists out there hey. who's <laughs> willing to, you know, be a part of this great organization. Get in touch with their will, you know, you'll talk about that later about Absolutely. your um where they can find you at. Okay. Uh, so I want to just talk about um, the music. So is it like a specific genre, like jazz or R&B? Is it, or is it like now, this merged is together? So ideally we are paying homage and tribute to jazz and the jazz culture, jazz okay. history. So we're, you know, performing jazz music. But the majority of the vocalists within Sisters of Tune are not traditionally trained jazz vocalists. Okay. So I myself, I would say I'm more of a R&B, I can do pop and soul, 
um, a couple other vocalists of gospel, some vocalists. Good, we have good. maybe two that are formally trained jazz vocalists, but everyone else is, you know, of other genres of music. So do they have, um, do you guys give them that training? You get what I'm saying? We, like with, we have um, individuals within who within the group that actually facilitate internal and external workshops for... <laughs> They yeah, they are doing it big. Well, not yet. We're still working. We're still trying to work. That on is amazing. <laughs> so, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> We're still working on trying to execute additional workshops with you know funding permitting since it's you know our introductory year for this particular type of programming. Mm -hmm. We're um, looking for assistance and funding. So. We're out here, and our website is. Oh, oh I know. <laughs> is. <laughs> Oh my gosh, she has such a great sense of humor, guys. <laughs> um, so I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, women, women okay. empowerment. Uh, a lot of people say that, you know, oh, women don't get along or the negative stereotype. So I want to know uh, from your opinion, um, especially women of color, that's okay. um, specifically in media. Right. Um, how yeah. are we portrayed? You know, have it has it evolved over time? Or do you think we're still, you know, you know being depicted um, excuse me, being depicted um, inequitably, you know, in in the media. It's I think there are a lot of um, inaccurate portrayals of African American women in media, and it kind of sets the precedent as to how we're treated in the professional world, specifically in the arts world. And there's this assumption that women can't get together and do something positive when right, you have right. so many other outlets that portray the very polar opposite of what could be established on a positive perspective. Mm -hmm. I think that we, you know, we struggle hard with, cha you know, being challenged with just, you know what, I'm just gonna reach out to the sister and these group of sisters and let's right. see if something happens. If mm -hmm. it doesn't happen, I'm not gonna take it personal, but there's someone else who is like-minded and willing to build with us. Right. So we just kind of dispel those rumors and we just work together, we are positive. There's no egos. We come together. We come together and work. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, we come together and work. Now, what about on TV, though? Television shows. Well. Social media. Social media, yeah. That good old Twitter. The, you, know? you know what? There's this thing going around called Pettyville. I need for everyone to move <laughs> out of that area. I need for everyone to leave the Pettyville. <laughs> she said the Pettyville. You know, I need for there to be no more Petty LaBelle. Because we had Patty. Patty has a Grammy. Petty has nothing. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, you see these reality TV shows and they portray our, you know, right. women in a negative light. And unfortunately... They sign up to, to make these portrayals, so they kind of cater to that stereotype. And now you have people thinking all women of color are ABWs. Yeah. And what's ABW? What? Angry black woman. <laughs> say it again. You got to say it again for the Angry camera. Angry black women. And it's, <laughs> I said, we, you know, we're all not like that. Most of us aren't. <laughs> Reality is most of us aren't. Right. I mean, I do understand that, um, you know, women of color um, in general, you know, the trauma, you, you get what I'm yes. saying, like healing. I do understand that part. You know what I'm saying? We do need healing. I, I do understand that. But um, everybody is not angry. Um, I do get upset sometimes, though. But don't, we're human. Don't piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, no, <laughs> but it's just kidding, though. But I just um, thank you for that comment. No problem. Uh, and so my next question is, uh, what can women who are looking, you know, to do, um, to evolve in their music, Okay. Um, and who's looking for something in your company, okay. your organization, what can they, like, get from it? You know, what is the outcome do you, um, I guess this is what I'm trying to say, right? The outcome. Ah. Let's talk about the outcome. Okay. Um, of the artists, right? So what do they look forward to the outcome um, of your program? They look for merging the gap between art and commerce. Okay. You have a lot of talented people. Yeah. And talent is a great portion of the business but if you don't understand how to be um, have an entrepreneurial mindset with mm -hmm. your art and your craft then you will not be successful right you cannot be a one-trick pony you have to think about your own brand as a business you yourself as a business so if you don't have certain basic things as a YouTube channel mm -hmm. um, a Facebook you know you should probably have you know, a newsletter as to where you're performing, you should be constantly doing something, yeah. staying in the minds and in the eyes of people so that way they can see, oh, wow, you know what, I'm going to check these guys out and mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, keep your, 
your um, promotions readily available at the click of a finger, you know, use that technology. Um, you should have some basic understanding as to having, you know, at least an audio file and mm -hmm. a video. Because that's the, when you're trying to get hired, the first few things they ask for, do you have an updated headshot? Wow. Do you have an updated bio? This is something, now these seem basic to you and I. Yeah. But they're not always readily available. One, because a lot of artists have limited means of funding and financing. Right. So and that's to get you come in. a professional headshot mm -hmm. that costs money, to get um, a good quality audio track of yourself, right. that costs money. And um, mm -hmm. so basically the outcome is you want mm -hmm. the women um, to know entrepreneurship right. and to know business and, and, to, and to brand themselves in Correct. that manner, yes. in a proper manner at that. Yes. Um, and I would like to say, um, can we hear something from you, though? You can actually hear something from me at our upcoming show you know on what? Friday. <laughs> You know what? We can hear something from me at the upcoming show. Did y'all see that? At the I like that transition. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good transition. So on yes, April twenty eighth. April twenty eighth. Um, let's talk about your event. Yes. Yeah, so we're it's currently Happy Jazz Music Appreciation Month, aka Jazz Appreciation Month, <laughs> aka Jam. We're honoring Ella Fitzgerald because she is one of the legendary icons yes. within the jazz community. And as a matter of fact, her charitable foundation, you know, gave the initial seed money to start and fund Jazz Appreciation Month. Really? So April is I like didn't even huge. know that. And April is all, her birthday's tomorrow. Her birthday is April 25th. Oh my. And we are doing our show in honor of her. She and it's like had, a tribute to It's her. a tribute to That's her wonderful. for her 100th centennial birthday. 100th what? 100th? 100th birthday. Yes, she's no longer with us, but we still want to honor her legacy over 2,000 songs. I, that is amazing. So yes. are the women um, who's going to perform it, are they yes. going to be performing over 2,000 songs? No, <laughs> we wouldn't have that time. That'd be a marathon show. Oh my so gosh. What we're going to do is take some of the best hits from Ella Fitzgerald's um, mm. songbook and we're going to perform them in our own way, in our own style, at Venice Island. Um, doors open at 7.30, yes, and the show guys. is from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., 7 Lock Street, and just f in Philadelphia. And just so we know, a lot of people are unaware that Venice Island is actually not an island off the coast of the Schuylkill River. It's actually a maniac, <laughs> so, like... It does get confusing. Yeah. You know, uh, Venice Island, um, isn't they're that like in Venice California? Beach. Right. I think they're thinking of Venice Beach. Exactly. <laughs> But, I mean, it's pretty cool because it's like Venice Island. Well, what's that? You know, yeah, that's the, a very, you know, that that's a, perf a Philadelphia performing recreation yeah. center. It's been around for maybe, this is, I think, a second or going into the third year of mm -hmm. its existence. So it's a state-of-the-art 250-seat um, oh facility with a great sound system. It's really great, and it has a whole parking lot, so parking is not going to be a problem. And how many people are you expecting? Uh, we would hope to, you know, have every seat filled if possible. Okay. So we really would love for your support for you to come out. Um, the proceeds from our ticket sales go to charity, our nice. you know, the Women's Coalition for Empowerment. And, you know, we're just really excited. I know, I know, <laughs> and I'm excited for you. And so what do you look forward to, you know, for the event um, April 28th? Well, I look forward to having four headliners from these the the collective mm -hmm. sisters of tune can i name them of course you can so we have ella gaunt which rhymes with dupont, DuPont. and she's a local like jazz that. vocal legend she just had a show honoring ella fitzgerald last week at really? uh, the clef club oh my gosh. and it was like ella sings ella so ella gaunt is one of our headliners and then we have a bethlehem the vocationist robertson she is a female vocal percussionist vocalist and Percussionist, and she's the vocussionist. Vocussionist. So she uses her entire body as an instrument. Oh my! Along with her tarima, which is a um, a raised platform, and it actually balances out sound. Wow. So that's what she does. So and she's like a like a human instrument. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. She's like. So a she won't use a physical instrument. It's just her body and her voice. Yes. That is amazing. And we have. Um, Alexis Simmons, a.k.a. Alexa Gold, and we have, she's, I love her music, I really do. She has a lot of house music and world music, so it'd be a great to hear 
her vocal style singing Ella Fitzgerald. Right, a jazz type of feel. Yes, and then we have, oh my girl, Jakia Sanders. Oh wow. Powerhouse vocalist. I mean, she does world music. She does gospel. She does R&B, oh, soul, gosh. pop, rock. That girl sings every genre. I said, it's not very often I meet someone that can execute um, vocal ability in every genre with proficiency. Mm -hmm. And she just has a feel for the music, so it's gonna be great. And then you have the remaining members of the Sister Satoon Collective, myself, Shakina B, okay. um, Batia Barnes, and Sauda Al Akbar will be in the finale. And our host. So you'll be performing. <laughs> Something I need to I, see. I, I may do a tune. Do a tune. Um, our I feel like you're being modest. I am not. <laughs> Guys, I, I just no. feel this vibe like she's going to kill it, right? And I just feel like she's being so modest on the show today. But okay, I'll, I'll pass it by. Uh, I hope to see you there. I know. I, I'm checking my schedule. Okay. I'm telling you. Uh, so it sounds like a great event. I'm looking forward to coming as well. Likewise. Um, so I want to know something as well. Um, okay. Your your organization yes. talks about self identity, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just want to know. I know there's a lot of women out here that struggle with that. Absolutely. You know, with hair extensions. You know, <laughs> um, you know, body image, and um, you know, just even in general, just the patriarchal system as well. Right. You know, like things that that try to keep women down and 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 put us into this box. Well, right. Um, and <clears throat> I want to know your thoughts on, you know, what it is to be a woman and knowing yourself. Right. Having that self identity. What can you give us some type of advice or okay. any suggestions that will be good to, you know, fuel a woman's self identity or, you know, self esteem? Well, you know, what? being a woman is a challenge and an obstacle and it's not easy. And Unfortunately, because we live in a patriarchal society, you're constantly reminded of that, even with the microaggressions of our male counterparts. And then on top of that, being a woman of color, mm -hmm. struggling with one trying to be understood, you know, and also just not wanting to be completely vulnerable mm -hmm. and not allowing that vulnerability to be apparent to everyone because you have to protect yourself. And that's like the first thing that you want to do is to protect yourself so it's for myself I find it to be a struggle and I'm hoping that what we're doing is going to empower people how I've um, began to empower myself was one to gain knowledge do research um, try to when it, when there's something that's a stumbling block that mm -hmm. I can see it's a potential you know blocker for me to gain to the, get to the next you know opportunity I said, okay, well, I need to find three ways to get around this, and I'll do some research, and I'll figure it out. Just, you know, we'll doing research, staying informed, staying educated, because once you have knowledge, right, no one can really take I that away that. from you. Once you have information, and that a lot of times is what makes people beholding because they lack the knowledge, and they're looking for others to give them that knowledge. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I'm a firm believer of, do your research, do your, you know, gain information, um, continue to believe in it. You're going to get a thousand no's, but there's going to be a yes, and it's going to be worth it. I love it's work, that. Abby. That is so inspiring. Thank you. And uh, I know um, Sister Satoon is yes. your, one of your programs. Yes. Do you have any other programs, like a mentorship program? Or well, I guess there's any so many other? things wrapped up in it. Um, <laughs> The Women's Coalition, we have, like, we give donations. We have this thing called Share Talk where we get together and we try to sit down and share every resource that's out there. Once there was a time that we got together during Share Talk and we're like, okay, who has what information about low-income subsidized housing? Mm -hmm. And somebody said, oh, there's Section 8 and there's, you know, this apartment. And I said, no, I have an entire site dedicated. There's an entire site out there dedicated to low-income subsidized homes, which is a struggle, especially for artists, mm -hmm. low-income to severely low-income artists looking for sustainable, um, a roof over their head, yeah. a residence. You Because some be, of them are mm, homeless. You homeless know, or, or couch, struggling. Couch surfing. Mm -hmm. Or college students trying yeah. to live out their dream as well. Yes, and 
you know, I went to Temple University oh, yeah. before they had all of these, uh, before they had all this extra housing. And when I came into Temple, I was a transfer from CCP. And when I got there, they were like, you're a um, upper level student, you're a junior, so we don't have any housing for you. So you're gonna have to get off campus housing. Yeah. Mind you, I am wow. not from Philly, so I had to figure wow. it out. And a lot of my journey, I attribute the good portion of the information that is on the Women's Coalition's website, including mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, subsidized housing website, if you go to our website. I love that. <laughs> I, just, I just love it. If you go to our website, um, www.thewce.org, yep, T-H-E-W-C-E.org, mm -hmm. and you go to our resource section, it is broken down by employment, entrepreneurship, housing, um, funding, artist information, so just check that out. I've used a lot of those same systems to help myself so I can be the testament. I'm the testament of it's very useful, it works, it's helpful. And the way I'm getting this feel is, right, that you, and I love this, everything that you've went through, you know, during your college years mm -hmm. or you experience, you put all that energy and all that time into your organization. That is amazing. Um, how many years did it take for you to build this up? Well, we're still building. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I guess I mean, we started, you've come a long way, though. It's been about six years. Wow. Um, five to six years now that we've been working on the organization, and we've gone through our ups and our downs. Being a new nonprofit, most other yeah. nonprofit organizations tell you not to start an organization, just join another group. And I've done that several times, but the issues that I myself wanted to see addressed were not being directly addressed. Mm -hmm. They were these large programs and it wasn't like personalized service to each individual. So they have, you know, federal funding and the federal yeah. funding has its criteria and guidelines. Yes. And those guidelines of, often miss the important functions of just every individual isn't going to fit in this criteria. Yeah, and um, I just, uh, I do want to say something. A lot of people that I've um, interviewed before mm -hmm. that had nonprofits, that have, excuse me, yes. nonprofits, they did touch on it a little bit about, you know, funders, you know, like federal. Um, they want to have control over, you know, right. the money and, and what they want to distribute to organizations. Exactly. Which sucks because then you're limiting, like you said, you know, like you're you're the missing a, a very great yeah. population of people that need help, and and they're numbers driven. So if you're a numbers driven, the quality of service is going to be diminished at some point. And you can say, oh, we service this many people. Okay, well now next year you're going to be servicing the, the same people with the same issue, and it's unfortunate that people, the help that's really necessary for them to come out of the situation the funders are so out of touch with that population right so you have people who are not even capable of identifying with the group of people they say they want to serve so I myself feel like I have an edge because I am the person who was that person who is that person and I can identify I speak the language I understand the culture yes so they with a, they lack cultural competence. <laughs> they I lack like cultural competence with the people they want to serve, but they have all of this funding. I'm like, give it to me. I'll allocate it properly. <laughs> I know how to allocate it properly. It's like, right. what, SNAP. We talk about it all the time. Yes, SNAP. You'll have SNAP, um, EBT, and they're talking about food, but what about hygiene products? Yeah. What about, you know, clothes? Clothes. What about, you know, other... Um, perishables that's necessary mm -hmm. but they don't consider that fact they're like okay well you know and when you really break down the amounts that women and families are given for this assistance you're not really empowering them you know and we have culturalized supplemental life as it is a factor of life but this is normal it's mm -hmm. not normal you've survived off of it you know much like the slaves survived off of the scraps yeah and now the scraps have now entered into our culture as, you know, eating chitlins as part of our culture, but that's just something that we have adapted as culture, but right. it was just a tool to stay alive. Yeah. This, the system is set up to supplement a life, wow. but not to really wrap around services for empowerment. So it kind of fails 
when your expectations are, well, this person should be able to get up by the bootstraps. And where are these bootstrap people? <laughs> they need the strap. I'm sorry. I'm done. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. And you are the CEO. You are the founder. Yes. Like, you're the executive director. You're <laughs> everything. So a lot of pressure is put on you. I'm just a concerned citizen <laughs> trying to make a way for myself and also try to help people like myself who yeah. need the assistance, who need the support. And, and I guess I want to know, like, so how do you, you know, go about your day? And, and, and I mean, is do you work another job or is this your, this is all you? Like, this is what you wake up and every day. This is you... when I wake up, I eat, sleep, breathe, right. live it, love it. And it's hard. It's very difficult. And so... I guess my question is, uh, so when you're doing that and you have that, that touch on everything, does, like you said before, you, you touch on the PR work, right? You yes. gotta, you gotta write, um, you know, like grants, proposals, proposals and yeah. grants and stuff like that, um, write up for grants because you need money. Yeah. So tell us about that process and how, you know, some, um, uh, I'm just, just okay. in general. Well, I can because tell you. for people that have a nonprofit out there that wants, that wants to know, you know, Right. The help or um, any advice or, you know what I'm saying, just to give my, them a little... Um, my advice would be, yeah. one, the IRS website has been very useful for me, a very okay. useful tool. I read Nonprofit for Dummies, even though I don't like that name. I like that. <laughs> I read that. I read Grants um, for Dummies. <laughs> I also have gone to multiple workshops. I've been to trainings, um, intensive, like, weekly trainings. Some were free, some were low cost. But I invested the time because I knew it was going to be a return once I began to invest in the organization. And then you have to learn how to, you have to have a, a strong discipline in budgeting. You know, that's something that, you know, how can you allocate your funds to the best of your ability? And also having the correct paperwork. Wow. And I struggled with that because I wanted a mentor to coach me in that. And there are a lot of individuals in seats of power, but they themselves did so not the either start, start the organization tell the or they will not groom you. So they mm -hmm. are, instead of just saying, you know, I really don't know how to do that. Right. They'll be like, okay, well, you can come in and intern for me and serve me coffee. Okay, well, serving me coffee, me serving you coffee is not going to help me to learn how to manage from an administrative standpoint, how to sustain an organization long right. term. So I attribute a lot of my, um, the basic successes of actually running the organization legally <laughs> from the workshops, the IRS website. Mm -hmm. Their Wonderful. tax exemption department is great. They are very helpful. Um, read as many books as you can. YouTube is great. Go to grants.gov. They have free trainings. And that is wonderful. Free library of Philadelphia. I mean. Now, did you go to school for this? I am currently in school now, but prior to that, um, I, everything was self-taught. So I'm currently in a um, program where I'm learning how to do management. But even the management portion is really a theoretical base approach on what to expect working with other people and planning a program, but not necessarily the paperwork. Right. That's what everyone needs to know. And, and I'm glad that you touched on that because mm -hmm. that's, like you said, a huge part of, you know, building an organization and yes. things like that. That's amazing. Legalities. Yes. <laughs> I love how you said that, legalities. Yep. Do you have a lawyer too, by the way? I am the lawyer. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I am the lawyer. She's the no, lawyer too. I'm not. She's the executive director. <laughs> she's the CEO. She's the, she's every, and she's the lawyer. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming no by. Um, where you. can they find you on your website? Oh, you know, absolutely. Um, you can go to the Women's Coalition's website, www.thewce.org. You can like us on Facebook or the, under the Women's Coalition for Empowerment, Inc. You can follow us on Twitter, the WCE, Inc. I'm on LinkedIn, Shakina B, <laughs> the Women's Coalition for Empowerment. Um, we're on YouTube. If you Google the women's, if you put in the search bar, the Women's Coalition for Empowerment or Sisters of Tune, we're everywhere. Please sign up on our newsletter and okay. follow us. <laughs> I love it. And Thank this you. is a woman that's doing her thing. Congratulations to Thank you, you and your business. Thank you. Congratulations um, to you. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, don't forget to tell, um, talk about your oh, event. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay, so April 28th, uh, 2017 this year. <laughs> <laughs> Door is open at 7.30 at Venice Island. Concert is from 8 to 10. You can um, buy tickets, go to our website, or you can go to Eventbrite, Ella-Fitstival.com. 
www.eventbrite.com. And um, Venice Island 7 Lock Street, that's in Maniunk, uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. All right. And, you know, if you want more information, we have a lot of upcoming events happening in Philly, too, so stay tuned. This is not the last show for the year. This okay. is our kickoff show. And we definitely will be in touch. So, uh, yes. you know, Tea Time with Celeste will be there around. Okay. Maybe taking, <laughs> you know, some pictures. Yes. And other things. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much thank for you. coming. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And um, no, we're not done actually. <laughs> uh, up next, we have a special guest from uh, Millennials in Action. Um, great organization. I can't wait to talk to them about some civic engagement and politics. So uh, stay tuned for that. And this is Tea Time with Celeste. I am your host, Silver Celeste. Stay tuned. <laughs>